what is the walkaway movement? I mean, until a few weeks ago, I had never heard of the walkaway movement. And uh, I don't know if, uh, how many of you have, but the walkaway movement is a movement that, I mean, I don't know if it's a movement, but it's a, it's a phenomena on YouTube primarily where people have basically given up on the left and have abandoned the Democratic Party and the leftists. Um, and what they're doing is they're posting videos explaining why they have given up on the left and the fact that they're walking away from the left. Uh, many of them, I guess, are becoming Republicans or, or more of the right, but many of them are just, I think, are recognizing they have no affiliation, but they are abandoning the left. And whoops, we lost Jennifer there. So I'm not sure what happened. Maybe she'll dial back. Uh, so uh, this, is, um, this is people walking away from the left, the people who primarily, I'd say, over issues related to free speech, over issues related to just generally the nuttiness of the nihilistic left. So these are people that are abandoning, um, you know, abandoning the, the, uh, the nihilism, but also abandoning the wackiness, the intersectionality, the, um, uh, you know, the, the, the pandering to anything any supposed oppressed group has. I think post Kavanaugh, uh, some additional people joined the walk away, supposedly the walk away movement. Now, I have no idea, and I don't think anybody has an idea how big this is. There, there are a lot of videos. There's a lot of retweeting on Twitter. For a while, there were rumors that I think the left spread that, uh, that the retweets on Twitter were all Russian bots or I don't know, maybe not Russian bots, maybe Chinese bots, who knows whose bots they were. But people have done, it looks like people have done some research and that's not true. There was just a lot of retweeting. But again, it's hard to tell how big this is and it's hard to tell who's retweeting and it's hard to tell uh, exactly what's going on because you're dependent on watching the videos and counting them. So it's, it's, it's not a good thing. But I, I would say this, I suspect that there are a lot of these people and I'm not sure why it's been called a walk away. I guess the first video was by a guy who uh, defined the movement as the walk away movement and people have picked up the hashtag. It's hashtag, you can get up on Twitter, hashtag walk away. Um, but I identified this phenomena well before the walk away movement. I identified it probably, what is it, three years ago, two and a half years ago, when I first did the Dave Rubin show. And of course, Dave Rubin, if you will, is the first walk away and, and he's done a video about why he left the left. And when I did the Dave Rubin show uh, two and a half years ago, the response I got was so overwhelmingly positive. The number of Twitter followers, the number of people who started following me was so large. I mean, we're talking about well over a thousand new people just, you know, uh, uh, signed on to my account, both on Facebook and on Twitter. And it, it was huge. And these were not people who had necessarily read Ayn Rand. These were not people who were objectivists. These were people who were, for the most part, former leftists, but had a respect for reason and science. And I've been saying for a long time now that in my view, probably our best audience out there in terms of, if you were converting or in terms of bringing on on board to our ideas are people on the left who are not the nihilist left, are not the wacky left, are not the crazy left, are not the, 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 the egalitarian left, but people on the left who have a, still have a respect for science and reason and who have not identified themselves with the right primarily because they view the right as religious, they view the right as dogmatic, they view the right as anti-reason, anti-science, and also because they lack an understanding of, of economics and, they, and the principles of individual rights and other uh, important political principles. But I think that if you accept reason, even if you have a false definition of reason, but if you accept the idea of reason, then you can, we can work with you. At least a certain percentage of those people can be worked with. If your whole basis for knowledge of the world out there is faith, if your whole basis for knowledge out there is a, is a dichotomized mind in which accepts faith and a big part of it and accepts 
reason, I guess, when they go to work, but it's, it doesn't have this, this commitment to reason. It's, it's much harder. So I've always said that there's an element within the left, call it center left, pro-reason, pro-science. I call it the Dave Rubin audience. Or another way to think about it is the intellectual dark web. I mean, think about most of the people in the intellectual dark web are people who, in a sense, have signed up to walk away, like uh, uh, the Weinstein brothers and many of these people. They're not that they become objectivists. They certainly have not. Right? They're not even capitalists. But they have rejected the wackiness of the left. And for the most part, they even reject the Democratic Party for supporting the wackiness of the left. So you're seeing an intellectual dark web, which was the precursor to walk away. You're seeing Dave Rubin, who was the precursor for, for walk away. And I think what the left is doing right now, and I think this explains Trump, but it also explains walk away, and it also explains, I think, a real opportunity for objectivists, is the left is so nutty, is so wacko, is so postmodernist crazy that they are basically uh, 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 rejecting or, or they, they are turning away a lot of people that we have an opportunity to pick up. They're turning away a lot of people that I think respect reason and science and therefore cannot respect the, the, the kind of Antifa tactics or cannot respect the identity politics takes or cannot respect the whole idea of intersectionality. They just cannot respect, the, the, again, the nuttiness, the nihilism, the real nihilism of, of so much of the left. Oh, Jennifer's back. That's good. And as a consequence of that, I think there's a real opportunity for objectivism, for, for those of us who advocate for reason and science, but consistently advocate for reason and science, to at least uh, offer an alternative to uh, the worldview that these people hold uh, to, to one extent or another. So what its implications? The implications are that I think the left is actually losing power. I think that, um, it, you know, I think that the, the, the people turning against the left, and I think that if there was a legitimate alternative to the left, not objectivist, but not the Republican Party of Donald Trump, but if there was a legitimate, pro-reason, thoughtful, interesting alternative to the left, I, I think it would do very well today. I think, I think a political party that rejects the, the, the wacky, the socialist, the egalitarian, the anti-business, I mean, the vehemently anti-business attitudes of today, the Democratic Party and the whole, and the whole leftist agenda, uh, and you know, had a, some respect for individuals, had respect for the mind, had respect for, for science, it didn't pander to the anti-evolutionaries, it didn't pander to religion. I think that political party would do fantastically well today. And I think it's an opportunity to capture the walkaways in such a party, but also as part of the intellectual dark web. And hopefully some of them uh, can be captured in favor of objectivism. Uh, in, in favor of ultimately the ultimate philosophy of reason. So I view this as, as wonderful news, as a real opportunity. Thanks, uh, David, for pointing this out. I do think it has legs. I think, I think you'll actually see this grow as the left becomes more consistently nihilistic. And, I, and I've often said that I don't think the left can win. I don't think the left can, can win totally. That is dominate American society and dominate American culture. It's too damn crazy. And Americans are not crazy. So Americans will not give up to the extent, to, to the extent of, of accepting nihilism. Um, they'll accept pragmatism, like the pragmatism we're seeing from Donald Trump, but I don't think they're quite ready to accept nihilism. All right, that's...